There we go. I wanted to press record to make sure we're getting it recorded. Um, all right, so I guess what I'm going to go over today is um, my build for the Hobby Link International, the, uh, the group build, which is this here, and it's upside down, is the Supernatural car from uh, the Chev uh, Chevy Impala from Supernatural. And some of the things that I want to do is it's a pretty static model. You know, it's almost like a curbside model. Um, but if you ever watch the show, they have a bunch of um, spirit hunting tools and supplies in the trunk. And what I want to do is I want to open up the trunk and be able to, you know, basically make that trunk look like it's got all those tools that it had in the show. And the end goal is to have a diorama of this probably, you know, pretty typical, but probably in a cemetery, maybe with a mausoleum with some lights and LEDs. Um, I'm also going to use, uh, put some sound in this by using, I don't know if you watched any of my other videos, but, um, oh, and there's no video. Hold on. Using this sound card here, uh, it's pretty unique. Uh, it comes with no pin headers on it. So you got to put your own. I've got one right here, and I put some wires on here. So using an SD card, you can put MP3 or WAV files on here, and there's eight different wires that come off of this, and depending on which one of these hit a ground, a song will play. It's even got a 5-watt, 3.5-millimeter um, jack out here for speakers. It's also got some pins for speakers. So I'm going to use that to get some sounds in there, uh, most likely the song by Kansas. Uh, which was real popular in a song and maybe some other Halloween sounds. Yeah, I'm packing away my bench and tea is nearly ready. Roast pork, oh, and I'm still not ready for work. <laughs> yeah, I don't have to worry about work till tomorrow. Packing away my bench. Oh, I, I don't like packing. I, we had a move, just moving into this place was, uh, was difficult enough, uh, and we're quickly running out of room. Um, even I've got bags on the floor back here. We've got boxes out there. Uh, I think we actually need a bigger place. Uh, the place next door is for rent, so we're maybe thinking about going over to there. But we'll we'll think about that. Uh, let me get the keyboard out of the way. So back to the model. Um, trying to do this and. Read the chat. Oh, uh, yeah, well, I start early, too. I start around, well, I get up at 4.30 to get in, hopefully, around by uh, 6, so I can do what I need to do and then get back here into the cave and start working, because, if you, like I said, if you watch any other videos, I've got a lot going on. i got all those part works, which have taken over the channel, the fire truck and the Terminator by Agora. And then I've got the Enterprise, the Eleanor, Back to the Future, all of which have had no parts shipped since November. Um, actually, that's a lie. Over the weekend, I just got a box for the Enterprise. Uh, I'd much rather have been the Eleanor or Back to the Future. And the, the Enterprise is beginning to wear on me a little bit. Um, it, 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 those panels, you know, I don't know if you've been watching the builds. I'm sure, you know, it did Kalen in. He, he got rid, he dumped his uh, Enterprise build just because of how difficult it was. It's it's just not fun. Um, I, I, I need to complete it, so I'm, I'm going to follow it through, but I don't think I'm going to be doing many more modifications. I'm just going to put it together as is. I'm not doing like Todd McWilliams is going through uh, all these mods with lightings and all that. I'm just not that into it with that one. You know, I'm probably going to do a few more mods on the Eleanor. Definitely on the Back to the Future. Uh, I might even put a... Matter of fact, on the Back to the Future, I'm actually thinking of just going way off left field. I'm actually thinking of making a steampunk DeLorean rather than keeping his movie stock. Everybody else seems to be doing the DeLorean. Uh, I figure, well, you know, if everybody else is doing it, let me take it a different direction. I thought maybe steampunk would be pretty good with a lot of copper pipes and... Maybe take Mr. Fusion and turn it into some, maybe make it into some kind of steam-powered, you know, time travel device. So, anyway, back to here, what we're going to do is we're going to open this up and go over it. Because I've, I've taken a little off, I haven't really looked at the pieces. I don't suspect this is going to be a tough build. Like I said, the, only, the hardest part is going to be is modifying that trunk. 
I don't know how Todd has the time. Oh, neither do I. I uh, Kayla, I have no clue. I mean, the fire truck alone, some of those mods are really cool. You know, I'm doing that MDT mod. Um, we just got a new laser cutter for here at the um, at this cave. I have a real big laser cutter and all my woodworking equipment at, at another location. But I just got in a brand new desktop laser cutter uh, and X tool, and I want to be doing an unboxing on it and all. And that's going to really help me speed along some of this stuff because a lot of the laser stuff I do for the part work stuff, they don't. Need, I, I don't need a, a thirty by thirty you know, laser bed. That I have over there, I little desktop one will be good. So uh, look forward to that video. Um, so let's let's see. How am I going to show this to you? Let's go to this camera. Ah, there we go. All right. So like I said, I ex expect this to be a pretty standard uh, build. Just had to ask what a DeLorean is. <laughs> well, I I, uh, I don't know where you want to go with that joke, but you know sometimes I almost have even forgotten you know <laughs> what I'm building. Uh, Eagle Moss has been really really bad about uh, getting stuff out, but you know I can't beat them up too much. You know they have had the the you know we got the supply shortage, we've got a shipping problem. Um, they've had some internal problems I think with the, their, fulfill, their fulfillment houses. Uh, which I think they just switched again uh, a couple months ago, and now things are starting to come out because I've gotten notice a couple of things from the Enterprise are coming, the DeLorean are coming. These are all those are charges on my credit card. The only thing that's come regular from for the Enterprises are those shuttles, which they're cool, but you know they're nothing whiz bang. I think. Oh, here's one right here. Um, hello. You know this this is a brand new one. It looks like this is. It's a sh oh here. Let me go over here. It's the uh, I don't know. Everything's reversed, so I gotta. Uh, it looks like it's the captain's yacht, and it's just one of the standard shuttles. Um, I this is like the third box I've gotten gotten for the shuttles. That's the only thing that's becoming regular since November. Um, it's kind of aggravating, but you know, given the under normal circumstances, I'd be a little angry, but given what everything's like in the world right now, I think I can kind of understand how they're a little behind in shipping. Some people are really brutal to them. I can't be that brutal. I mean, we can't keep, you know, here in the States, we can't keep stuff stocked on the shelves because there's a shipping problem. So I can't imagine what it's like getting something in from, you know, across the pond. I've just sprayed my red arrow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can probably guess what color, <laughs> what a DeLorean is. Uh, I don't even think I have any. I my DeLorean build up from. from this is pretty funny. Well, to me it is. Um, my part work build up for the DeLorean. I started that like a month before COVID hit in 2020, and I've put together like two front tires and the suspension. And haven't touched the DeLorean since. So I literally have, uh, it's, it's behind the camera, but I've got a whole closet. I've got almost two years now worth of parts for the DeLorean. I think the shipment they said they just sent were parts 94 through 90, 94, 95, 96, 94 through 97. So I have got to be coming darn close to like getting all the parts in for the DeLorean where I can just start building them. And um, and I think I'm taking a, uh, I see Kaylin's name up there, you know, which made me think, and uh, Mrs. Make and I were talking, these part works are taking up a lot of time on my channel. And my channel's not just, it's it's not like Hobby Link or Kaylin's where it's just models of part work. You know, I do everything. I've got, you know, Halloween builds over here that I do. I do leather working, woodworking, I've all kinds of different projects planned. And the part works have just, taken over on on the fire truck i just did one stage uh took me almost a week to do in editing and everything because there's so many little pieces so i think what i'm going to start doing with the part work is i'm just going to do them as a live stream and i'm going to run for an hour and whatever i'm at at that hour I'm cutting it off and then i'll do another live stream with the build later on because uh if i dedicate myself non-stop to these part builds i'll never get anything else done on the channel so i think you know Kaylin kind of scaled back how he was doing 
his builds by not really describing what he's doing, just showing us the building. Building, I'm still going to describe everything, but you know, I, the pack four is here. I'm going to do you know the next stage, which is I think 25 or something like that, or 24, and I'm just going to do whatever stages are in that pack four. And once it hits an hour, I'm cutting it off of that pack, and and that's it. Uh, I just, um, I did red color. Yeah, I, it's just, like I said, there's a lot, you know, Halloween is, is kind of like the bread and butter of the channel. You know, all the, all the mods and the, and the kits and the, you know, the cases I make for the equipment. So I, I need to get back to that. And even though summer hasn't really hit yet, people are planning, you know, the home haunting industry is really incredible. So us home haunters, we're scheduling and, and planning out our haunts for October now and buying stuff there. So I really need to get back to my projects for Halloween, you know, like with the sound card and the relays and all that. So that'll be going, that'll be going on. So let's take a look at, which camera do you think that is? It's this one. Why can't, oh, there we go. So like I said, it's probably pretty standard what's in here. Uh, it's a 125th model. You know, here's your, well, here's the chassis underneath. Um, again, it's just your typical. It looks like it's molded into black, but obviously we're not going to keep it, you know, stock. We'll, we'll reshoot that up primer gray and then reshoot that with a nice gloss black like it was in the show. But here's where, um, here's where the problem comes in is this trunk right here. This trunk obviously does not open. Oh, that's even scuffed a little bit. Oh, that's because I was trying to, I opened this up before I was trying to cut away this trunk. Um, so the problem is I got, there's some, obviously the line, the, there's lines for the trunk. So I've got to, I think that's what I want to work on today is I want to try and alleviate the trunk from this area uh, so I can make it so it opens up so I can make all the stuff that goes in there. Um, yeah. So we have that. This is obviously just the, the under chassis right here. Where am I? Here we are. Pretty standard. Uh, there's some detail work you can do under here. I don't know if I'm going to go that detailed into the undercarriage because, you know, to be perfectly honest, like I said, this is going to be a diorama. What's really going to be important is, you know, the, the chassis up top. And then you got the support chassis right here. What else we got? Some chrome parts. Put this up here. Uh, that's a good idea. Well, we got four people in here. Well, we oh no, three people. So I count as one. We had five. Someone left. Now here's some stock chrome parts right here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to keep them. The chrome plated here or whether I want to go through trouble of stripping them and then recoding them, uh, maybe using all clad because um, I love all clad. Um, but I, ha I haven't really given, I haven't really made up my mind yet whether I want to pay attention to like, really doing a lot of modifications on the car beyond the, the spirit fighting equipment they got in the trunk or whether I want to spend more time, you know, making the diorama. I, I think the diorama is going to make the car pop. Uh, I, I might have a second car I'm going to add to the diorama. I'm going to need that as a surprise uh, for, the, for the build in October. But yeah, there's some, this is the bumper, and this looks like there's some, oh, the door handles, obviously the hubcaps. Uh, looks like that's the police mirrors that they have on there. I think they have the, not the police mirrors. Yeah, the uh, spotlights that are on the windshield posts, those are there. So put that back in there. And the other chrome parts, like this is the rear bumper, uh, rear view mirror, wipers. See, it's little things like this that sometimes, you know, that I might have to do something with. Um, the wipers, it's hard to see on this view, I guess, but the wipers are chrome. Um, that kind of annoys me because, you know, wipers aren't chrome. 
they're, they're, they're black. So I may have to do something to, in my mind, make them a little bit more realistic. Let's see, what else do we have? Um, I'm going to spend too much time on the unboxing. I'll stay right at this view. Obviously, here's the, some of the, the lenses for the rear. They're red. You got the windshield right here and some clear pieces. Um, headlight lenses, things of that nature. And looks like this is just more of... Here, I'll open this one up. So I'm kind of curious what's in here. This all looks like it's the... You know, there's no lighting over here. That's actually a little better. Uh, this looks like it's some suspension parts. You got some uh, coil springs. Uh, like I said, it looks like some tire suspension parts here. Obviously, this is self-explanatory. This is your, your hood and your seats. Uh, door panels. Now, the door panels, I may do some detailing on there uh, because they're going to be visible. Uh, anything that's not easily visible in this model, I'm not going to detail out too much. But the stuff you can see, I'm going to, I'm going to detail out. And i got to get it all done by Halloween. That, that should be, we have a little um, out here, Mrs. Maker has actually made, and she hates when I call her that, maybe that's why I keep saying it, um, she has a, we have a humongous grid, it's got to be like a four foot by three foot grid, and it's got all the projects for Halloween, for the park builds, whatever, with dates on them of completion and I think I have missed every single goal date that she has set up and she does not let me forget that at, at all. Tires, um, they're actually rubber. I might age up the tread on them a little bit to make it look like they've been used a little bit. I was actually kind of surprised they're rubber. I thought that I, for some reason I just expected them to be hard plastic so I'm kind of glad about that. And now we have some other parts. This looks like it's the, well, you know, let me open it up. Making sure nothing drops out or gets lost because you see my park work builds. I'm forever losing stuff. This looks like this, some uh, hubs for the, a lot of flashing, for the, uh, for the tires. Looks like we got a rear differential, some mufflers over here, uh, complementary parts for the muffler, steering wheel, uh, intake uh, manifold. So there's uh, air cleaner. So these are looks like this one here is mostly all engine parts. As is this one is all engine parts too. Oh, and that's because I just noticed that actually they do make the hood open up, which is kind of funny because on this car the trunk's the most important part. Not really the engine. So the fact that they make the hood open up, that is, I, th I think they must have taken a standard Chevy Impala and all they did is maybe made the injection molding a little bit of a different color and then they just, you know, threw a supernatural, you know, instructions on, and graphics on here and, call, and called it a day. <clears throat> Excuse me. <coughs> It looks like we might have some decals. I don't know what the decals would be. Well, now, now you got me curious. Let me put these parts away. Because I'm trying to think what could possibly be. Because I'm thinking back to the show. I mean, maybe some dashboard decals. But it wasn't really a race car. So, you know, or a sports car, you know. So it's not like he had, you know, Edelbrock stickers and all the other kind of things that some hot rodders would put on their car. So we'll put this all back in here. This. Clean up workspace. Keep this out because this is what, as I'm chatting to you guys, I'm going to try and open up that trunk. Uh, you're going to add a car because you have... 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> tree would be Katrina. That would be my wife. You're going to add a car because you have so much time. Well, it's a snap together truck, a car. So um, it's an option. It's not definite yet. I think it was the general body mold and the added chrome. Exactly. I think they just took one of their Chevy Impala because it was a popular model, the Chevy Impala model, and they just rebranded it for Supernatural. And let's see what decals. Oh, well, this is kind of weird. Um, I don't know. It's going to be hard because this one main decal is... Uh, no. Okay, so anyway, right in here <laughs> is a decal of a pentagram, which she and some other symbols here that they use for protection. Um, the, the problem is, let me go back over here. Can you? Well, maybe not. Anyway, the problem with this is, is this stuff went on the trunk. <laughs> so they're including stuff to go on the other side of the trunk, but they don't, didn't open up the trunk. I, I, that's really weird. Oh, and then there's a couple of the license plates. If you're a fan of the series, um, their license plate would changed uh, about three or four seasons in, so they had a couple of different plates. Uh, the most popular is the 8003 license plate, which is probably what I'll put on it. And over here, this is a decal for the um, dashboard. And I think that's it. They got a couple other decals here, but I don't know what they are. But as we build it, we'll figure out what that is. Uh, I was in the general. Oh, that's just the same thing. All right. So actually, we only have two people in here because I don't know if we can count Katrina as a viewer. It's, you know, having her in here is kind of like a revival tent. Just kind of bumping up my numbers. Um, all right, so I went to some high-level sources on how to do this. That's another way of saying I Googled it and looked it up on YouTube. And what they basically, everyone says, is you take the X-Acto knife and you turn it upside down and you drag it down repeatedly, and eventually you'll get through. Now, I ordered a Tamea a scraper. Um, that helps with this, but it's supposed to show up today and it hasn't shown up yet. So I guess what I'll do is I'll try to do this right now. And, oh, I can see this is going to be time consuming. So, Lewis, did you with Hobby Link, did you go in with the Halloween build? And Kaylin, did you do the Halloween build for 2022? Did you two guys sign up for that? I was curious who else is in there with it. Believe it or not, I am scoring up some plastic. So it looks like I'm getting somewhere. Ooh, so now you're dedicated. <laughs> and as I'm doing this, I'm actually breaking through. Yeah, I'm making no progress yet on getting through, but... The hardest part about doing it this way is, um, no, I have way too many other thing, builds that I'm doing. I was, well, I love helicopters. I was thinking about doing the helicopter build, but I got enough on my plate, I think. I, I skipped on that one. I'll just, you know, just get in the Halloween one. I had originally bought this to actually do for... Uh, last year's Halloween build, and you saw how that went. So, and I'm so confident on my abilities that 
I have another one sitting out in the other room just in case I screw anything up. I've got backup parts. And I actually uh, got these off of, um, out of Hobby Link International, Hobby Link International, out of uh, Hobby Lobby uh, when they were having one of their 40% sales. I bought one and then went back the next day and got another. Oh, bent the blade. Oh, I think I see a line down here. I think I'm actually going through. This must be really exciting for you guys to look at. Yeah, I got them both from the store. Why? You don't, th you don't think I got them both from the store? I'm pretty sure I got them from the store. Yeah, I bought the one in Hobby Lobby. Or did one come from Colt TV Man Shop? Oh, one of them came from Colt TV Man. And the other one I bought from Hobby Lobby. I forgot where I'm buying stuff at. Kaylin, what helicopter are you doing for the helicopter build? Oh. I don't know if you can see or not, but there's a white line in there. I'm actually starting to break through. I can hear you talking in the other room. I don't know if you know that or not. She's Katrina's typing stuff in here, but she's also talking out loud in the other room. Oh, the hind. Oh, that's cool. What scale is it? And I'm through. This wasn't as bad as I thought. You're gonna have to type that. I didn't hear 148. Oh, okay. That's boy. That's uh. See, I don't like the small models. That you you seem to really like doing those small models. I I want something big. It's easier for me to handle. Oh yeah, they said don't go all the way through. That's what your, that's what Katrina was saying. All right, so I'll stop there. Now the tricky part, I think, is there's a curve in the trunk. Let's see how much patience I have for doing that. Yes, I know. Um, I stopped. I stopped. trick is to stay in the groove as you're doing this because if you hop it and create a new you skid off and scratch the trunk you create a new groove for the knife to follow like I just did That's a scratch we got to fix.
Well, the first two steps of the instructions include over 60 pieces Well, 60 pieces, that's a lot. Oh, I can see Bondo is going to be my friend. I might be able to hide a lot of the crimes on this because the hood's, the hood, the trunk has got to be lifted up. So I may not have too much of a problem. I bought some tools, but I, I <laughs> after buying them, I realized, you know, they're good for other stuff, but you know, like hobby saws and all. I But what I did buy was some diamond coated, um, string that I thought maybe I could put through there and just work back and forth to cut the groove but I can't find it so we're left with this method Katrina probably put it away somewhere now I can't find it Chris K is almost done with his cockpit. All right, I'm gonna, you said there's 60 pieces, but I'm gonna, I guess I haven't built models in quite some time. Um, I'll show my ignorance. What, what does PE stand for? I, I know it's probably something I know, but tell me what that is. And on a side note, I've been doing this for about, what, maybe 10 minutes now with an X-Acto knife, and I haven't drawn any blood yet. So I think I should be commended on that. Photo etch. Okay. Did just say photo etch. Maybe have to put a new um, who's his most favorite thing in the world. I, I've seen a lot of the photo etch kits that come with some of the models, but again, I, it seems like a lot of time for some of the stuff that I want to do. I think the top portion back here is a little thicker than what was on the sides here, so that's why it took me a little longer to get through there. All right, end the debate for us, Lewis. What, what time is it over there? I, I think it's about, I think you're five hours ahead of us. We, we always, because we're trying to figure out a good time to live, live stream, and we, I begin to think maybe 11 o'clock our time would be a good time for everybody for here and over in your part of the world.
this is about as exciting as LEDs in the Enterprise. <laughs> yeah, it's, what is it? It's 11.35 here. Almost time for lunch. Ah. Yeah, I think putty and sanding is going to definitely be my friend. I guess I should have picked something more exciting for a live stream, huh? Oh, I think I'm coming through. starting to come through. What have I got to do down here? Oh man, I don't know how I'm going to do that. Yes, there's now a white line on the underneath, so I'm getting there. And we still have a whopping four people in here. Me, Katrina. I think noon or one is better. Remember the left coast is 10 or 11. <laughs> She's yelling from the other room. Stop reading. I was going to have her in here reading chat to me, so I didn't have to stop. I guess I should have done that. You can't be interactive if you don't read. I think I'm almost through here, or through enough, let's put it that way. I don't want to go all the way through. I think I'm going to leave the rounded corners to do last. Then I'll hold these into place. I'll treat it like a CNC. I even thought about heating up the knife and going through that way, but then I thought it might warp and destroy the, the plastic. Ah, why'd you bring that up? Um, yeah, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I don't know if I was just going to cheat and just use glue to hold it in the place where I was going to build hinges. I haven't really looked at that yet. I guess 
If I wanted to be accurate, I guess I need to look at a Chevy Impala and see what the hinges are like. Because I have no idea, because who would really look at a Chevy? All right, so I think I've gone through enough on that. So let's start on this side of the trunk. Can't hear you. <laughs> She's yelling from the other room. I still can't hear. I, we've been married for 33 years. I can't hear anything. What? What were you saying? And I don't know how I would build the hinges. I guess I would maybe 3D print them. Yeah, now I know on my Mustang they had like a, it was like a semicircle for the hinge. But what I might do is not make a functional hinge, but what I might do is just use glue to glue it up and then glue the hinges in, the glue the hinges in to make it look like it's actually doing something. Can we see the difference? <laughs> On what, what I'm doing? I'll have to check that out. You, um... You can't see too much of a difference up there. But on the back... You can, you can see the white lines of where I went through. Uh, not particularly straight up here, but, but when I look at it like at arm's length, it's straight enough. Hmm. You know what I think part of the problem is? Old black medical book. Where is... Oh. I was looking for them. I think I need a new blade. Wow, look how sharp this is. Now the important part with getting rid of a blade is you throw it in the most common wastebasket you have point up so when you push everything down to compact it, you can poke yourself. That's a helpful hint. Okay, now let's, now we can really do some damage. Oh yeah. There's nothing straight about this.
Stop talking because I want to roll here. Although I've been told I talk too much. Where is... I heard that. Oh yeah, this is going through already. Hey, Kenny, you're up and about. I was a little worried I was going to have to ask where to send the flowers. Oh, yeah. It, it's, yeah, thank God for these. <laughs> Take a pick. I'll be using a lot of them. Um, I'm hoping everything else that I put in here will take the focus off of that. Uh, actually, so far, I'm pretty impressed with how well I'm doing. Um, it's this down here that I think when I'm done this, I, I think I'm going to be pretty much done for the day because I need to think about how I'm doing this. Because the problem is, is this... Uh, here we go. If you can see, is the trunk is curved right here. So it goes over these flanges that hold, I guess the rear, they're going to be holding the rear lights on. So I have to literally separate just down in here. But I don't know if that's going to be enough to keep those, pe those pieces on. Oh, excuse me keeping those pieces on there. So I may have to actually glue these pieces on separate. It should be interesting. And she's murmuring something from the other room. I have no idea what. Um, Kenny, have you done this before? It sounds like, it sounds like you have and, and did you find anything particular to make it easy? We have faith in you. Well, I'm glad someone does. Where is... This is actually going better than what I thought it was going to go. The hint of using the knife upside down really worked. Really worked well. Okay, so I'm um, almost through on there. I don't want to go all the way. Part of me was even thinking about doing something really gutsy, and that was just trashing the whole trunk all together and making a new one. And um, I don't know what I was thinking on that. I guess I was being overly impressive with my 3D skill, 3D printing skills. Okay, so that they're through here. Now I got to give some thought on how I'm going to do this in here. And I think I may wait until the scriber I ordered came in from Tamiya. <laughs> Kenny makes everything look easy. Oh, the same exact way. Oh, okay. At least I'm in good company. Um,. All right, so I don't know if you can see. We are, we went through on both sides of the trunk and we did the upper part of the trunk. Now I just have to do this part right here, which eh, I don't have the strength for today because I got to think about how I'm going to do it. Uh, like I said, at least I have another box. I have another model that I can fall back on. Um, but I'm pretty impressed with how far I got today. Because that should be, like I said, it's a pretty simple model to build. It's just these modifications. Because after I get this up, I still have to build, you know, the actual trunk. So I'm going to have to do some assembly on this um, to see how much room I've got. And I'll probably 3D print a trunk bed for that. Um, 3D printing is, I think, a modeler's greatest friend.
<laughs> the magic of editing. All right. How long have we been on? Oh, we're coming up to an hour. It's just about perfect. All right. So I think that's it for today. I think maybe tomorrow I'll uh, think about this all night tonight. Another sleepless night. Uh, thinking about how to separate that out. Uh, I think that's going to be a bigger problem than, than I thought this was going to be the hard part. It really wasn't. Um, I think that is going to be. All right, so we're putting that back in the box. Closing it up. What I've been trying to find are some 3D models of Sam and Dean. And I can't seem to be able to find any of those. I thought it would be easier than what it was because I was trying to ha trying to get them in the diorama. Um, I'm going to keep looking. What What is this, a map? You, you unfold it, you can't get it back? There we go. What? She said something. I got lucky, Joe. I bought mine. You too, Kaylin. You take care of yourself and uh, take care of that back. And I'll, I'll be talking to you soon. I have a package coming out to you. I mailed it, but um, it doesn't look it's it's well, it's going from one coast to the other. So sometime this week you should get it. So be on the lookout to that. I sent it to that post office box, the same place I sent the other stuff. Yeah, like I said, just popped on real quick. I haven't done a live stream except once, and I decided to use Streamlabs to do it. Um, let me, well, you're just, look at the Mr. Hands. Let me go. There we go. Um, so I decided to use Streamlabs, and I figured this would be a good test. I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to do each Sunday. And from what I heard, it looks like 1 o'clock may be the best time to do it. So maybe each Sunday at 1 o'clock I'll do it. I'm Obviously, Wednesdays are taken up. Saturdays are taken up. Monday afternoons are taken up. But I'm at the agency on Monday afternoon, so I can't do that. Um, so I think Sunday at 1 o'clock. Maybe we'll have some cocoa next time. Cocoa in the cave. Um, <laughs> sounds like an adult movie. Um... Yeah, I think that would be 1 o'clock would be best. So, I want to thank everybody for stopping by. Um, and um, keep looking out for some weird projects, especially if you like Halloween. I got some uh, electronic projects coming up with some sound and some relays. I'm going to have some pack three of the fire truck will be out uh, starting tomorrow with the different stages for that. And we'll be starting. And I think I'm going to be doing, like I just said at the top of the show, I think I'm going to be doing live streams for the um, assembly of the part works for now on because they're absorbing too much time um, filming them and then editing them and putting them out. I'm just going to start building things on camera, let it run to an hour. At the end of the hour, whatever stage I'm at, I'll finish that off and call it a day and then I'll do a live stream somewhere else. Those live streams are probably like a, a pop-up here and there. There'll be no schedule for them, so I'll just put a notice. I'll schedule them so you'll know but they'll just be a pop-up. I think that's the best way to do them from now on. So, um, hope you enjoyed it. And thanks for stopping by. Um, is it, what's this? Thank you for the stream, a Halloween project. Oh, well, yeah, we have a lot of Halloween projects coming up. Um, there's sound cards that I use. Um, there, there's, uh, motion sensors that I use. That I do a lot of different props with. Um, there's one thing called a button banger where you can, um, play a, a piece of um, sound effect and then you can program when the relays pop off. Uh, one of the big projects we've got coming up is uh, no, this is not my granddaughter when she's from the morning. Um, this is uh, a static doll uh, from Spirit Halloween. Got it half price, but it doesn't move. So I'm going to add uh, some servos to the arms and the head and program that with an Arduino. That's one of the projects I've got coming up. Uh, Katrina and I are real big uh, Halloween people. But they can also be used for Christmas. Yes. Uh, I actually got her to come out from her desk. Mrs. 
maker, Katrina, just popped in and said, yes, a lot of the stuff I'm doing can be used for Christmas. Well, I try to keep my deadlines. Well, aren't you just special with your deadlines? Um, I keep my schedule. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, they can be used for, for Christmas. I, uh, again, I apologize. My monitor's over here, but the camera is in front of me. And I have a tendency to talk to my monitor instead of the camera. i got to stop doing that. But, yeah, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing can be just carried right on over to Christmas because a lot of the stuff, the last one I did, I showed how to do operate deer motors and all from, uh, from relays and all that. And I know a lot of the Halloween props all use, you know, deer motors or simple uh, geared motors, AC geared motors, so they can be used for that. Um, but, yeah, we're, my, Katrina and I are both really, really into Halloween, and actually that's what we're going to do when we retire is just make props. Oh, excuse me. So, again, I want Christmas. I love Christmas. Yeah, I, you, you and Kenny. Um, yeah, there's a lot of different things you can you can you, you could really goose up, like some of those um, Hollow, uh, Halloween, some of those Christmas decorations from Home Depot. You know, they're they're all static. They might have a little bit of movement. They got a really good sound or anything like that, and you can start adding sound. That's what I really liked about this this card that I'm using. Um, you know, there's different modes you can use for it. But what's really cool about it is it's got a 5-watt, it's got, listen to my English, it has a 5-watt amplifier on board, runs off of 5 volts, with a 3.5 mil, or, which it's got two pins, so you can wire it right to a speaker. But what's really cool is disregard the, the built-in 5-watt amplifier, it also has a built-in 3.5-inch millimeter plug. So you can actually plug these right into, like, stereo speakers and get some really good sound out of them. And in its simplest form... Uh, there's eight pins here, and what you do is you just label your mu your music or sound files, you know, uh, one and something, two and something, and when you hit one of those, ground one of those pins out, um, you play that particular song. So in the simplest mode, you just have one hooked up to a motion sensor, and it can trip and play some cool sounds. So it's a good way of getting, like, sound into a static prop, and, you know, with Christmas, you have tons of different songs and sounds. You could even give your reindeer some reindeer noises if you wanted to um so i think that is going to be it for today um i guess this will be out i i haven't figured that part out on how you take a, a live stream and put it up on youtube i don't know if they do it automatically or not but it'll be up there eventually uh if you have any ideas or anything just let me know uh, send me an email and till the next time uh thanks for stopping by I'm Steve. Welcome. I, I ended it like my video. I think you all pretty much know who I am. So till next time, see you. Thanks for stopping by. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Done automatically. That's what I thought. All right. Bye. Well, I could. I wanted a real dramatic crossover into an ending screen, but you know, I lost my mouse. Bye.